Yeah, they'll be fine. I've been having some bleeding lately happening. Not me, but like through the thing. And audio bleeding. Yeah, the audio bleeding. It's always been a thing. Mm. And I think a lot of it is because maybe we talked way too loud, which is a very real deal. Mm-hmm. Your beard looks real fucking good, man. Thanks. That's like the most I've seen. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the F Word Podcast, the best podcast you'll never know. I'm your host, G, and with me, as always, is... No, not as always. Is Vass, so far as always. Sure. And Anthony, who was gone last week, but is back this week. But I am back. But he's back. He's back. Mm-hmm. Uh, hope everyone's doing well, having a good week, all that fun jazz. Um, Saskatchewan F Word Podcast is part of the Saskatchewan Podcast Network. And they are covered by Connexus Credit Union. And here we go. I give you guys no notes nope. at all. Nothing. No, that's fucking. Let's go with I don't even think said. I saw that Vibranium trailer. I didn't yeah. either. Uh, oh, looks. I guess should have. It was pretty good. Talk I heard it was actually. I heard it was pretty good. I heard yeah. It was actually, I think Casual Movie Goer said he liked it a lot, mm-hmm. or he just said it was actually interesting, which was surprising because I don't know. I just found the name. Like G said, a knockoff metal in the MCU. Yeah, like it was. It's it sounds like a five year old trying to say vibranium. Yeah, and they're like, I don't know what to call this vibranium. Oh, perfect! Thanks, Timmy. So, what is vibra? What is it about? I don't know how to pronounce it. What is it? What's it's the meant to be trailer th- about? It's meant to be a thriller, and uh, I think it's Jesse Eisenberg. Hmm. Okay, and uh, I can't remember the actress, but she was in Need for Speed. The British chick? No idea. No? Anyways. Uh, basically, they look at this house in a suburb mm-hmm. that turns out like every house is identical. And they end up getting just stuck in that entire neighborhood. They try to leave, but they can't. So the house actually was already set up for like a kid. So the idea is they are not allowed to leave until they raise this kid that gets delivered to them. So they get a kid in a box, like Amazon style, hmm. and they have to raise it, and that's how they escape. And they have to survive this nut house that is this neighborhood that's every house is identical. Like, Are there other people in the neighborhood? No, it's just them. That, this is interesting. It's you just have... them raising okay. this kid, and that's how they can leave. Like, must be like an 18-year mark. That, okay, he can go, and then you can go. Is the kid like... It's not theirs. Is he, a, is he a regular kid? No, it's a regular baby, everything. Yeah, it's legit. Like, they're raising this kid fully. That's weird. So what is the, like, the premise? thriller aspect of it? Well, just the, the the psychosis of being stuck in here. I'm not, I can't remember if there's... Can they leave the house? They can, I think they can step outside the house, but they just can't leave that mm-hmm. place. It's like, it's like a labyrinth or just a never-ending kind of thing. Mm. So that's what I gather from it. I can't remember if there's people messing with them in the house too, but I think that's literally just the, the psyche of being stuck in this mm-hmm. place, raising this kid. And doing that. So, like, they just go through their motions. I I don't know the food situation. I wonder if they get airdropped, if there's a supermarket nearby. I don't know. So, maybe on the next trailer, but very The one girl, by the way, was Imogen Poots. Imogen Poots, that's her? Is that how, I don't know if you, that's how you pronounce her name. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Imogen. Imogen Poots. Imogen. I don't know. That sounds actually interesting. Yeah. I will check out the trailer when I you go should. home. Because it's a thriller. Thriller night. Um... Before we get to the other stuff, this is what I have for today, so you guys can kind of like process it and roll mm-hmm. it around in your heads. Uh, rest in peace to Monty Python founder, mm. and uh, I think he's also a, was a director, Terry Jones. Uh, if you're a Monty Python fan, I was mm. a fan of, and now for something completely different, obviously Holy Grail, Life of Brian, classics. I've seen clips, but I actually really, want, like after I heard that too, I want to like actually go through and start like just watching the they full are, movies. They are still. Is the, there's not an order to watch them, right? It's no, just, yeah, not no. really. The, obviously, Holy Grail is like their, That's their the other crowning. One I know of. That is their yeah. Holy Grail, mm-hmm. but, and now for something completely different is really good, and mm-hmm. obviously Life of Brian has been a big one too, but yeah. like, yeah, all three. Classic. Um, I haven't seen them in a couple of years. But when even did they a come out? Years... They were like old. Like I, I was, I, 70s? I'll tell you. Yeah, they were fucking old. I remember as a Holy kid, grail. this one friend like loved them, and he'd show me like, like some mid, scenes. Mid to late 70s for sure. Monty Python. Okay, where are we here? Um, Wrong one. 
wonder what happened like why didn't people keep doing those style of movies though if they were like popular like they were popular right I th- or is it just like now holy, they're popular sorry holy grail was 1975 okay, fuck yeah yeah so but like still to this day again that's three, 50 three years half, old like almost years old. 40 yeah. is that 45 exactly Something i think like yeah. yeah yeah they're really funny but at the same time like you needed the right combination of people mm-hmm. and those were the ones that were in there yeah and guys like john cleese guys like terry jones that were able to just bring a type of humor yeah. that it actually takes a lot to get into because not people not a lot of people get it right away yeah it's not like our regular humor that's mm-hmm. a little bit more abrupt yeah um so but you know when they came out gangbusters and even when i was in elementary school everyone was always talking about it and then in high school it was a thing like it's just a thing and a really cool thing too so uh rest in peace terry jones other stuff i have the ps5 reveal the uh i watched a marriage story hugo weaving the witcher anime patrick stewart new captain america bad boys fucked up bill murray and some tarantino stuff i didn't write everything that we had in the did you see bad boys three no, not yet. Okay. Because I know you, you said you they... liked him. Like, that's why. He liked it, right? Yeah. yeah. You okay. look like you lost like 25 pounds. Why are you just like gassing this man up yeah, today? Jeez. Because he looks really good. You can go. Good, I'm not going to stop have, you. He looks <laughs> like, really, like yeah. his beard looks great. Everything. I don't know, man. It looks really good. You know what we um, Greek people do believe in voodoo, so don't throw it my way. <laughs> dude, you're going to give you all the voodoo. I never do either. Most of the time don't I tell you you're a weirdo. So That's actually a weird change of pace from last time I was here where you guys were just chirping each other, and now it's like. Don't worry. Let it happen. Listen, man. When I see something, I need to point it out. It's the end of the chirping, though. Three things before we get started. Yeah. The Witcher soundtrack is out, so we can all enjoy Toss a Coin to oh. Witcher all day, every day. It's like I don't know. I've been liking all the remakes on there, the, all the metal ones. For sure. Oh, yeah. For sure. Um, it is like a 40-track. Holy a crap. It's a 55-track album. But not all of them are like... it's No, it's all the soundtrack. Yeah, are they, are I get they that, used? but like they're all like... Some of them are small sound clippets. They're not all like full length. Are they all full length? There's two minutes? 549, 452, two minutes, Jesus, three minutes. Is There's un- some smaller ones for sure. Yeah. Okay. But... Let's there, see it how is, long is it the is album. long, and I'm I'm excited because I just I, in the background at work I have the Witcher three soundtrack playing. Okay, and Toss a Coin is number two. Geralt of Rivia is the first one. There's also another Geralt. So of do they Rivia have two versions of the Toss of the Coin on there? Just the just one the that there's the one that um in the show. What's his nuts sings? Uh, Jaskier. 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 Oh, otherwise known as Dandelion. I wonder if in the se- second season they're gonna actually call him Dandelion. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, uh, some season two stuff. Uh, um, just that with stuff we've already talked about it doesn't look like Mark Hamill is going to play Vesemir oh, I don't really? know but I just saw another report saying the creator wants him I mean oh, it, for sure yeah it's just that oh, she said talks, she yeah. definitely she's like it's unbelievable the fact that he's even Consider. considering it or oh, like okay. looks li- it seems like he's somewhat yeah. interested even if it's a joke she thought like she's super on board for it yeah but again not confirmed he, yeah um, he's done good in the mentor role because I don't know if you guys ever watched um, Star Wars no <laughs> No, uh, Nightfall, kind of Crusaders and stuff like that. Is that the one with Timothy Chalamet or whatever? And no, Robert that's Pattinson? no, that's um, that sounds super that's familiar. The King. But I don't think I've oh, seen it. Okay. Nightfall is basically uh, it's basically kind of loosely true on like the fall of the um, the Templars, the Knights Templar. Mm-hmm. But anyways, um, this one, yeah, there Come you go. Twenty seventeen. So one season. Mark Hamill actually plays uh, a mentor of this type in this one as well. Oh. So tried him, him this, transitioning into those types of roles, which it's kind of standard. Like he's doing, he's like master, master Skywalker mm-hmm. kind of training Ray. He did the nightfall thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and Tom Collins was the main guy there that he was training. And then now if he moves into Vesemir, mm-hmm. kind of moving into that role. So he's, yeah, like, he's a little typecast right now, for? but like, what does he do? So Vesemir is kind of, uh, he's a he's one of the top witchers in Care Morden, like head of the uh, order. Is he like the same that... witcher as like uh, Henry Cavill? Like he goes well, yeah, and kills like people. Like oh, yeah, like they're all the witchers. So there's a bunch of different schools of witcher. He is from school of the wo- the wolf. He's the one that trained uh, Geralt. He found yeah, okay. him as a kid. He was actually Geralt was given to him as a kid because he had these abilities. Mm. Then he trained them uh, in Care Morden, and he's kind of been also a father figure to him. Mm-hmm. Plus his trainer, right. and he trains all the other witchers at that school. There's a bunch of different schools, like another there's a temple. school of the cat. There's a school of the bear. Yeah, I think Manticore is another. But one. do you think physicality of a witcher would always like? I'm looking at it that way. Are they supposed to maintain like be almost like Geralt's sides for the rest of their lives because they don't age the same way, or we're just gonna take it on kind of whatever and he'll. 
They age longer. Right. So eventually, so let's say Vesemir would be 200, years 200 old. plus yeah. years old. So maybe he'll get to that point. Because let's be honest, Mark Hamill's physicality isn't there to say that. Truth. You could find, let's say, another older actor who's a little bit more toned in that way. I could see Matt him. Nicholson. I can see him being more of, you know how in the last episode, have you seen it yet? Of Star Wars? Or? No, Witcher. Oh, wait, you can go ahead. I will watch it, but I don't, don't You won't remember. Yeah. <laughs> so Probably. in the last where it kind of did a flashback and flash, flash forward, mm-hmm. I can see them doing the same thing mm-hmm. where it's moments of flashbacks of him with Vesemir in Kaer Morhen. Because he's already talked about the fall of Kaer Morhen. Okay. And I'm not as familiar with the book lore. Okay. I'm only familiar with the Witcher 3 stuff yeah. and a couple other things I've looked at on Wikipedia. Mm-hmm. So my guess is maybe that's what's mm-hmm. going to happen. Maybe that's the the actual thing that they're going to do is have it more of, um, like again, flashback to yeah. a time when he was talking to him about being mm-hmm. a Witcher. Oh, Valley of Plenty. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the one thing. The other one, Mur- music to be murdered by. Really good album. Mm-hmm. I am. I consider myself a huge Eminem fan. One might say I'm a stan. And his last Kamikaze was good, but it was like felt like the same tone the whole time. Like mm-hmm. he just was super angry at shit. Yeah. A lot of the rhyming was on unreal, mm-hmm. but it felt more of the same. Revival was. I didn't like it. I understood what he was trying to say lyrically. Mm-hmm. It's just like the so- the beat choices were terrible. The features were not very good. He just everything about it was just not what I wanted. I and found I really didn't, yeah. yeah I found some of the songs in Revival pretty good, but not as a cohesive album. Right, I agree with that. Mm. Like whereas. Like certain songs, you'd, yep, you'd yep. pick it apart, but mur- uh, songs to be murdered by. So far, I listened to it all in one one through, and it's pretty good. I didn't find any I really hated, and I, I typically go for the beat first. If I mm-hmm. if this, if it sounds good to me, mm-hmm. then I can go a little bit deeper and find out okay, what is he actually saying, and then kind of go from there, kind of thing. Again, so far it's only one listen through. Probably in the second one, I could probably pick apart the ones I actually really like, and I don't actually have a favorite right now myself. I've I've, listened, oh, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, please. I've listened to three fourths of the album so far, mm-hmm. uh, in order. I don't know. Michael, like my brother, has been playing it randomly mm-hmm. when we've driven. But I say those kind of nights is my favorite so far. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it is about Ed Sheeran collabing with Eminem. I just find like they work. Yeah. Like I don't know what it is. They just work. It's for me. From, from the two worlds. You I hated, hated his collaborations yeah. with. Him. I know, like lots of people. Like I know Michael hated him a lot. But in this, I really liked it. Mm-hmm. A lot of it is because it felt like old Marshall mm-hmm. like it felt like Slim Shady mm-hmm. it didn't feel like like the the one the one that we've been listening to for a while mm-hmm. I, I just it kind of brought me back it felt like this album he had fun mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. did you like what you've heard so far well I, the thing I really like that you guys mentioned is that like this album has a lot of range like, it's not like the same style of music like mm-hmm. there's the really dark songs yeah. there's the really like light ones like those kind of nights yeah and there's like, like more like modern rap ones like godzilla mm-hmm. which i think godzilla was really good too i think yeah he got the record for he that broke 229 the, two, yeah like i think 230 in yeah. like 30 seconds yeah. which is that's wild that is which is fucking fucking i want to do the math how many se- how many words is that per second that he would have to, to have done well you do the so math 230 divided by 30 this is a nice 7.6 7.6 words a second wow see I like this a lot because it's kind of a return to form. He's back with working with Dre, which mm-hmm. I think is super important. I think he kind of got himself in his own bubble and was just like, no, I'm doing everything. I'm locking myself in. That's it. But so he like, went to Aftermath? To... No, no. He just got Dre. Like him oh. and Dre collaborated oh, on the production to... side okay, of it. Yeah. Um, Royce is on three features, which is unreal because yeah. I love Royce. I The only one I don't care for, I like the beat of it and I like the flow, but I didn't care for Stepdad. Don't eat it. Step that was weird. Yeah. It was just too. You know what it is. See, it's that's like, real some shady. Like that's if I like, could, re- if I could like relate, the hating his mom. A- if I could relate to it, I'm sure yeah. I'd like it. But it's just like I had, I could not relate to the song at all. Well, that I didn't even relate to the way I am. But it's yeah. like an unbelievable song. Yeah. I just think for this one, it's like at this point, we don't need to know about your stepdad. Mm-hmm. Like it's been so long that he's been doing like the the hating my mom, hating my dad, then the stepdad thing. And he did the dad thing a lot in Revival. Okay. And so this one, I just felt stepdad could have been taken out. But the rest of it, I'm all for. Mm-hmm. I really love the beat for You Gon' Learn. 
That is the other one I like, too. Oh. I think I've added three to my playlist so far. Mm-hmm. Godzilla, those kind of nights, and you going to learn. It's mm-hmm. so good. Also, Yaya yeah is awesome. Little Engine, the beats. Like, I don't know what it is. Like, it starts off weird, but then it just keeps, it keeps going, going and going and going. I forget already. I think it's yeah. been a week since it's been out, too. I think it came out Thursday. Week, last Friday. Last Friday. Friday. Yeah, so I, I think I listened to it the next day mm-hmm. all yeah. Yeah, yeah. at one point. So I've been, well. I listened to it first start to finish. Mm-hmm. Um, and then now I've just on been listening shuffle. in it on shuffle. Um, I will is great. No regrets is great. Farewell is really good. Lock it up with Anderson Pock. Of course, it's gonna be good. Um, yeah, the the guitar riff on Leaving Heaven is so good. Like just his choices on things was really good. I was listening to one guy named the needle the needle drop. I usually don't follow him anymore because mm-hmm. he seems to favor mumble rap. And oh. he seems to give credence to mumble rap over everything else. Yeah. And so I'm just like, I feel like he's a little bit compromised, but whatever. It's his channel. He can do whatever yeah. the fuck he wants. But he was saying how he thought it was funny that Marshall was talking about mumble rap before in a negative way. And now he's bringing artists onto his album that- from from the mumble rap thing. Mm-hmm. The way that I see it is that he's bringing them in mm-hmm. and having them see a different way to make yeah. music that people can actually understand and yeah. don't need to get fucking high and do drugs to listen to. But did he call out any of the rappers he collabed with? Because I know in Call Cause he specifically no. like he specifically called out like six nine. Yeah. All he like called out the mumble rappers by name. Like well, Juice World I know he never called out, which is why I didn't care that he had a collab with them. You no, know, yeah. the biggest thing he did was on Caterpillar on Royce's album Book of Ryan was when he said, I'm gonna take an axe to mumble rap lumberjack with a hacksaw mm-hmm. and murdered see the thing for me i found kamikaze and even revival had a little bit of the same tone Mm -hmm. structure as mumble rap which i didn't like Mm -hmm. but once you listen to what he's actually saying it's he's not he's actually he's actually saying all the words Mm -hmm. where it's like where it's not just drugs drugs money bitches well and forget the the n-word 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 eminem but Eminem didn't do any rumble rap in the other two. No, I'm he saying... He said he used the same vibe. He used the same vibe. Like, he used that kind of like... Oh, he used it jokingly. No, but I'm saying he used it in quite a few songs. Joking, that tone. Yeah. But, he did, but he did it to show that you yeah. guys might think that this beat's going to save your careers, yeah. but I can do this beat better than you and make oh, yeah, it go Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, though, that's what he, he used. Okay. This one, he didn't use it as much. Not at all. So, this, is, this is boom bap. This is like a boom bap album. Exactly. So that's what I kind of remembered. The yeah, Revival and Kamikaze had a lot of those, and like even... Uh, um, Lucky You. Mm, Lucky You is a good one. I Lucky You is a great one, mm-hmm. but it has the tones of Mumble Rap because him and uh, who's who do you is it collaborate with? Turner Joyce, I think. Maybe Joyner Lucas. Joyner Lucas. And actually, friends. their voices are very similar. So for, I, when I first heard it, I actually didn't know who was singing. He's a protege of like he's oh, kind of been a protege of sorts. Yeah. Joyner Lucas is really good. Yeah. But anyways, Lucky You had that vibe of a little bit of Mumble Rap, that that tone structure, but the lyrics behind it and what they pulled off. And I actually liked the video quite a bit too. It was mm-hmm. pretty sweet. Not a like is one I, I like the most out of that one because again, Royce is on there, yeah. but the beat's awesome. And again, so Kamikaze was against the people that hated Revival and also another stab at Yeah. But I like that album for the fact that it's like here are the beats that you guys use and you guys make trash. Yeah. And I'm gonna say it, I do not like it. Mm-hmm. And I've said it before. I just do not like that yeah. style. It is not for me. So the fact that he took those beats that they were using mm-hmm. and made better albums or better tracks out of them, I'm like, that's what he does. This is, this is his thing. But mm-hmm. this one, this new one, is a very much a return to form. It felt really good. It felt like a blend of his new stuff and his old stuff. He was having, it seemed like he had fucking fun on the album. Mm-hmm. Like, I just well, I felt so, like yeah. he was enjoying himself doing it. It didn't seem like he was just so angry at everything. Yeah. And the best line. So, you know, Nick Cannon has been mm-hmm. sending, like, he's yeah. been making, uh, uh, what is it, diss tracks. Yeah. And the one is the best, and I think he did it on Marsh, where he says, uh, some of them get the kill shot, and some I barely nick them. Oh. Oh, God, when he said that, I, I never was paid like, attention to that. that's it. That's all you got to do. It's the best thing. You're <laughs> so good. Like, this is why he is who he is. Yeah. There's no, there's no other way around it. So there was one song, I don't remember the title of, because I was listening to it on my way to work, yeah. but it was the one... Where it like ends up with all the news clippings, like what the shootings? Darkness. Okay. Darkness. I don't know. I said okay. Like that wasn't like anything. Is but... that the one that he had a video for? I believe so. Darkest. So every like I've heard people online like criticizing him for doing it. Mm. I thought it was actually like I didn't like the like it was not like I love the song, but like listening to it, I was like, oh, like first is the Las Vegas shooting, mm-hmm. and I was like, that's kind of weird, but like whatever. 
And then he ended it off with that whole minute straight. The guy was driving the car, and it was like a long time of me just hearing all these news clippings stacking and stacking yeah. and stacking and stacking. I'm like, okay, that was well done. You and I didn't see it as being a cheap thing either, where it was like he was trying to profit off of any of it. Like he no. was, it's a message. I don't think so. I don't, I don't think so either. And mm-hmm. again, this could be my biases coming in, but I think the way that he did it was like. He's done political stuff like this before. Like he, he did wrote, one with he a did, female he, rapper. Like it was about another shooting. I remember. It may know. have been Skylar Gray, um, but he that. did White America back in the day. Like he's done mosh. Politi- he's done mosh. He's done political. That was during driven. the Bush era. Yeah, man. Like when they did he's that not away about from Trump. this stuff. And yeah. and I'm pretty sure that he definitely, obviously, leans a certain way, and he wants to see like. He, things get better this is his platform at the end of the day if he can yeah. influence anything he's do gonna try to do it wants. you know um, but i like that he used skylar gray again she's yeah. really good i think he'll always use her yeah um what's really funny is that uh Ethan was listening to joe budden and he had royce 5 9 on there and it sounded like he was having beef with m and so we're thinking i'm like oh well maybe royce has beef with m and he won't be on the album and vice versa and then royce leaves shady and then they bring back slaughterhouse because button will only come back if they leave shady because he didn't like the way that it went down yeah and turns out that royce and yellow wolf have massive beef so we'll see i'm gonna i'm gonna be paying attention to that because it wasn't eminem at all it was actually geared towards yellow wolf yeah it's so weird how like i've thought about this too how rappers and actors like they're kind of similar, but they're totally different. Like, you oh, know, yeah. actors kind of like don't beef with each other publicly, like for the yeah. most part. But rappers, it seems like their whole career, like a mo- or some people's career is literally based on diss uh, tracks, diss, yeah. bashing people and just yeah. going. Mm-hmm. Well, I just found it so weird. Sometimes it's just a publicity stunt, too. Mm-hmm. You never know. We saw, I saw that in an episode of Lucifer. Remember that? Where they were like pretending to have beef and then they were going to collab and make this whole like, oh, we're, we're, our beef is over and then create this mm. biggest album. It was mm. one of the episodes I can't remember, but it's been done over yeah, and over and again. And a lot of them do the beef because that's part of the culture. Mm-hmm. Like they, yeah. the, the rap battle scene. So this kind of segues into another one. I watched season four of Hip Hop Evolution, which if you're somebody that likes hip hop, even if you don't like hip hop, Hip Hop Evolution is the only documentary I recommend watching. It is very good. And I've watched it since season one. It's been coming out year after year. So I'm like, Season four now is bringing up to like, let's say my kind of era where they just introduced the Neptunes. Where did it, where does the documentary start? Like, what it starts in the very beginning with uh, DJ uh, Herc, who they started doing these parties, just DJ parties Mm -hmm. in these apartment buildings, like in rooms there. And then ended up evolving and evolving, then going to East Coast and the South had their side. Mm -hmm. And and like, it's such a well done documentary. And more and more people, I think, are starting to pick up on Mm -hmm. it. Um, so anyways, I watched that. Highly recommend anybody that wants that mm-hmm. sh- that is into hip hop specifically, watch it. It's mm-hmm. awesome. And I didn't realize how much Pharrell and I believe Chad Hugo is his guy. Mm-hmm. Like the Neptunes in general. Yeah. Um he's like the quiet one of the two. Mm-hmm. And yeah, because Chad Hugo, yeah. Um in the early in the later 90s, first of all, Pharrell wrote Rump Shaker and produced the song. Yeah. The song that goes, na 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 all I want to do is zoom, 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 zoom. Mm. So good. I didn't know that until yesterday. Hmm. Second, there was a point in the late 90s, early 2000s, where for every 20 songs that were on the radio, from pop to rap to everything, Pharrell, and, like the Neptunes have produced 12 of them. Wow. Oh. Holy I fuck. Had I was going to say no, like one. That's what I thought you were going to say. Dude, they were working with Clips. They were working with Rex and FX. They were working with Britney Spears, Justin Timberlake. They were working with some of the biggest artists at that time yeah. producing. And m- all the songs that we listened to were like a good chunk of them were from them producing wise. It's unreal. Hmm. Yeah, there's so much stuff. Also, they had like a segment of like Little John and how the East Side Boys came into prominence. Yeah. And going through the whole South section and Three Six Mafia on how like they wrote a lot of their stuff based on horror movies and the tones that were in there, like, yeah. it's that makes sense. It's so <laughs> good. Um, yeah, uh, so I, anyways, wow. I highly recommend it. Last thing, even though we're already twenty five minutes in and we haven't even gone to our topics, Marriage Story. Oh, I watched it and unreal. Oh. I was saw I saw the clip of Adam Driver like smashing the wall and telling Scarlett Johansson like the whole like spiel, and I was like. Because I was already interested, but I just want—I saw the clip on Instagram. So I'm like, let me just watch this clip, and it yeah. looks 
really fucking interesting and just mm. good. I was engrossed in it. I was like, mm-hmm. it is next to, like, I don't even know. I don't know if I can because I like Tarantino so much, but I don't know. There's something about Marriage Story that was just, just as raw as, let's say, Joker was mm-hmm. that Once Upon a Time wasn't. Mm-hmm. And I'm watching this thing. First of all, Scarlett Johansson, unbelievable. She did a lot of movies this year, too, yeah, which yeah. was like surprise, crazy. I haven't seen Jojo Rabbit, but in terms of performances, sure. this is my favorite Scarlett Johansson performance. Mm-hmm. It is so good. Adam Driver, awesome. Hmm. Okay? Everybody in this. Even Ray Liotta is in it. And oh, he shit. is also really good. Hmm. Okay? Are you saying it's, it's so- a contender? 100% we have a contender. It, I, I think that I haven't seen a lot of the other movies no. or the actresses uh, that are being nominated for mm-hmm. uh, Best Actress, but Scarlett, mm-hmm. 100%. I think Adam Scarlett. Driver also. Well, she has did. two, I think, because I think for JoJo as well, yeah. she's been getting nominated. So. Yeah, supporting actress mm-hmm. for that. Um, no, it was raw. It felt real. It didn't feel so fake. Probably touched home for you just because you are married now. Yeah. I, you know what's really interesting about it, though, is that I related to Scarlett Johansson's character. Oh. And that's a good thing, right? Like, is well, she the it, one you wanted to relate to? Nope. No. Oh, okay. that's the other thing. The movie doesn't pick sides. I, I at least I felt the movie leads you through both sides of this these two people's lives, and it doesn't necessarily pick a side. Mm-hmm. There isn't a definitive answer to any of it, which I think is the the most responsible thing that they could have done because mm-hmm. it's fucking real. Okay, like. And there was one scene where Scarlett Johansson is talking to her lawyer, and just the way that she describes stuff, I'm just like, oh, fuck. Mm -hmm. Like, I related to her more than I related to Adam Driver. Not to say that Soph is like Adam Driver's character, because she's diff. Like, her situation, when I really thought about it, because what it really made me do is think about my goddamn relationship, Mm -hmm. like, seriously. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot more than I think I have, and it's only been a year, and other people have been married for a long time, but if I can get some foundational work done now, then I think it's going to be a little bit better down the road. Mm -hmm. Anyways, Mm -hmm. I've just, and I've still, since I watched the movie, thinking about it, and we don't have a kid, and there was a kid in the mix there, and yeah, anyways, if you haven't seen it, please see it. Mm -hmm. So, do they set it up for a sequel or is it no. like yeah no. i figure there wouldn't be a story yeah <laughs> go off it's uh you know it, it you gotta do like a one-off art mm-hmm. piece and that's about it they they ended it with such a beautiful moment that's so it, you like it's so small but mm-hmm. act, but in other ways it's it's massive mm-hmm. like it, i don't know it's really good um i guess that was part of my list terry jones was also part of the list mm-hmm so we talk about The Witcher. The album came out today. The Witcher anime movie. Really so is that surprising. canon to the story? Like it's the fuck do I know, dude? Nightmare I don't of know. the Wolf. I actually didn't uh, look at the article too closely. All yeah. I just said anime. So <laughs> sometimes I just look at the headline and that's it. I'm excited that it's an anime, to be honest. Yeah. Well, if it was any type of dark kind of cartoon, yeah. what I'd really like if they did the um, the Enter the Spider Verse animation on yeah. it. I don't so know, does man. anime automatically put it to like a lighter version of what it exists? Oh, there's just, dark anime. There's now. dark anime. Oh okay. my god! Attack I haven't, on I haven't Titan? gone down that road yet. So Attack again. on Titan is stupidly good. If so, there's one anime you're gonna watch, that's it. Okay, I've I, seen I that one. A Attack on I haven't Titan seen it, but I've great. seen it. Yeah, if they decide to try to mimic something, I think Attack on Titan Mm -hmm. would be a really great way to do it. That's an old one too, isn't it? It came out grade eight for me, which would have been like, uh, yeah, two thousand, yeah, a while ago because I graduated last year. Uh, But I think I don't know. Yeah, it's still going on. Like I had a big break. Oh really? Yeah, like it's on. So what? Season sixteen? It finished. It finished season three this year. Oh wow! Yeah, it had. had They just taken like a five year break. Oh wow! Now pertinent to the story or just. Just oh, they were just making. Went. They were wasting their time making a bunch of live action movies that all fucking flopped in Japan. Oh, Yikes! Shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I'm I'm on board for it. Also, I forgot to mention, Nick. Thank you, Nick. Mm-hmm. Got us these cool b- Batman mugs or cups, and they're super solid. And they're actually and like stupidly good quality. They're like. really good quality. So, Nick, you're probably not listening. We miss you, and thank you. Yeah. I'm drinking scotch out of this. Hmm. It's not full. But you can't know because it's all black. <laughs> ah. Well, and it's funny that he brought these particular ones. I was watching Batman Begins last night. Oh, geez. Because I was like, so so every night we're trying to figure out what to watch. Yeah. And Soph no longer wants to watch The Office, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, or How I Met Your Mother at night. You know what? I'm, I'm kind of flopping between Brooklyn and How I Met Your Mother. I think it's been too close since I've watched them all through again, and yeah. I haven't started anything new. So I'm like, I'm really bored. So mm-hmm. Soph's like, 
can we watch something else? I'm like, but we're going to fall asleep in like 30 seconds. <laughs> she's like, well, come on. The worst is when she's like, well, put whatever you want on. I was like, okay, cool. So I go to put whatever. Not that. I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Marriage story, where are you? <laughs> uh, and so we put on Batman Begins. Okay. And then yesterday, because literally fell asleep before Bruce Wayne even ended up in the prison. Oh, uh, wow. Or before Raz Al Ghul even showed up to his door. So It's pretty early. <laughs> no, like right away fell asleep. And so I played it back and I watched the whole thing. I'm like, fuck, this movie's good, man. Yeah. And then I, I just started, we started Dark Knight last night. So I'll probably end up watching it tomorrow sometime. Yeah. But So one thing I want to throw in, yeah. because I mentioned this. Parks and Recreation, I've been like heavy so into it. So good. Now. Yeah. Like as soon as they introduced Ben's character, I don't know what it was about him specifically, but I just kept fucking watching. And I'm in season four now, like mm-hmm. right where Leslie's running for like the whatever she is the running for. The, yeah. And like yeah. all the problems are going on. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, a, it's actually a really good, like it's entertaining. It's like funny. I like it. Well, it's it meant to be now. in the Have same tone it? of office. I've watched like a first bit of the few seasons that just, I kind of fell off it. It's on Amazon, right? Yeah. I believe it is. Yeah. 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 We just finished watching yeah. it last week. I will suggest a good show I'm watching, like with Parks and Rec Two, is You. Okay, I haven't seen that one. Yet. I haven't it seen actually, that one. I've heard good stuff. It's it lives up. I'm like, I went in blind yeah, and I yeah, watched yeah. the first episode. I'm like, let me see what this is about. I'm like, I was generally shocked. I'm like, this is a, seems like a really fucking interesting show. Yeah. Is it? I compare like in my mind, I've never seen Dexter, mm. but this show is exactly like what I imagine Dexter is. Like. Yeah, mm-hmm. Dexter is good, except mm-hmm. for literally season? after the Trinity Killer, which is like. The, so the Trinity Killer is a, a defining moment in the show. Mm-hmm. After that, it just fell right the fuck off. Apparently. Before that, though, very good show. Hmm. Very good. But yeah, no, you, and I heard season two. I'm almost done season one, but I hear season two is even better. Mm. So Crazy. I feel like it's, that's a good sign when you're watching a show. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I like Parks and Rec a lot. Mm-hmm. And actually, I, like, I didn't even realize how funny chris pratt was in it yeah. he's so funny and tom i didn't know tom played master of none like i mm, watched mm, master of none mm. and my dad was seeing me he's like oh that's the guy from master of none i'm like no it isn't aziz right yeah, yeah. aziz azaria whatever he's i'm sorry so good in it oh yeah mm. yeah um and obviously i never understood all the ron swanson memes like the until oh that, yeah that but show. that's his personality he's there. so good in it like, he's like th- that's the thing this went hand in hand with the office kind of thing they were originally going to make a tie make it a tie-in where we'd see oh, really? dr mifflin paper boxes in the show See, that would be easy to do as a, just a cameo thing and that's but it because ann perkins is in it and she was also Anne played jim's like karen jim's, yeah oh okay in uh in the oh third yeah, season yeah, or whatever. yeah yeah she was the because bridge. she was a different character there it ah, wouldn't have made sense but they ruined it uh rob lowe is so funny in it and Perkins, he comes later, doesn't he? he yeah, comes he comes when Ben, ben shows yeah. up. Oh, okay, yeah. Who's I never saw him in many other things. Like, but is he's it still really going good on? in it? No, I think it's been over for a while. Yeah, it's done. Okay. What I liked about it is this: there's a lot of relationships that go on in the show, and aside from one person, one or two people in their relationships, the rest of them just go on business as usual, like normal. Like they don't, they never created drama in the relationships for no reason, mm-hmm. and and. I thought that was really, really good. And the other thing is, is that so Leslie Nope, Amy Poehler's character, mm-hmm. she's a feminist in there, right? Yeah. But they allow like the, she was a feminist, but she was like reasonable, and then she found error in her ways and saw how things weren't working. And yes, mm-hmm. they obviously have some characters that are super misogynistic and against what she thought and saw. But at the same time, like Ron Swanson's character is all, like her exact opposite. Yeah. And they have a beautiful relationship. And so none of that stuff affected their relationship like it would in any other situation. Mm-hmm. She didn't hate him for not being a feminist or for being like, I think he's like a liberal class, like mm-hmm. a liberal person yeah. or whatever, um, like a manly man. Or, and he hated the government, even though he worked for the government, which was just hilarious. Yeah. It, it just, I don't know. They did a, they did really a lot of really smart things that as you're watching it, I'm like, Oh, I wonder who they're going to break up or whose life they're going to ruin or what fight they're going to start. It doesn't happen. Mm. It's so good. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. I don't know. I, I I really, really like that show. So after you're done, I'd suggest adding it in your watch list. Yeah, yeah. The reason I said Bad Boys fucked up was for the reason that you brought up on our Bad Boys episode where they have oh, number yeah. four coming mm, yeah, and I they know. wasted the title on Bad Boys 3, Bad Boys for Life, Bastards. which I thought was... Super silly, but it's only silly because they're doing a fourth one. 
If the third one didn't happen, then they would have left it. Yeah. I still think they should have left it because yeah. my guess is I haven't seen the movie. You've seen it. Yeah. A lot of the times it's this is our last ride. We ride together. We die together. Bad boys for life. Uh, this is our last trip. Yeah. I'm coming out of retirement. I'm doing this. Like you can only do that so Damn. much. Come on, it's guys. the lethal weapon effect. I will say Riggs. one thing though. Getting too old for this stuff. Oh. <laughs> like I do. I'm gonna assume what you just said directly applies to this film. Because I it's how the know other it ones does. Been. Yeah. But every like every single person who's come out of the movie theater from seeing it has literally not I've not heard a single negative comment about the movie. I haven't either. Yeah, it's just is, I'm, too I'm, fun. How are you gonna take it so serious? But like I, I when I when I was watching, I'm like, it gave you that roller coaster. It wasn't all uh just comedy and crazy explosion and stuff like that. Yeah, there was that intensity and stuff because Michael Bay directed a few scenes, whatever. Fireworks. But uh Martin Lawrence was actually the comedic relief throughout all this, but it was logical comedic relief. Like he was just playing off Will Smith, trying to be like, you know, serious and this and that. Like, and he throw it in this comment and just kind of break it all up and whatever. But the two of them together, they still got it. Honestly, like you get a little weary them coming back and making this. But I mean, we've wanted another one for quite a while, ever since two. Two, one and two actually were both really good in my opinion. They the first were one I fun. liked the most. The second yeah. one was just fun and funny. Exactly. So this one actually might kind of be the best of both. I won't say it's better than any of the other ones, but it, on its own, it's it's really good. I'm not and saying that's ballsy, but that's ballsy. It is ballsy. And there's enough nostalgia there. Uh, there's a lot of stuff. But again, the remo- roller coaster ride that it takes you on, like from the emotional to the you know the action and then the comedy relief like it's just it's very well done yeah so I'm, did they sorry to cut you off but no, yeah no sorry did they end it off like oh my god with a tease for the fourth one or like very much 100 percent. there's uh mid- so they knew they were going to do a fourth one when they made i think i think so yeah and well, they still called it bad boys for life yeah. I mean, again the fact that nobody stopped and yeah. went wait a second guys yeah if we're going to do another one Again, even I think one of you guys said it on the podcast, he did. Bad Boys, say. not for four, but end it life with the three. Like, just as a design. They never did that either. That would have uh, been sweet. I didn't say that. You might have said that. But you said the Bad Boys for life for the fourth yeah. one. Yeah. You know what, it remind, what I like think of is that one cartoon where there's that boardroom table and the one guy in the back says the most logical thing mm-hmm. and they throw him out the window. Yeah. So it's like, well, if we're going to do a fourth, why don't we call the fourth one Bad Boys for life? And they just throw him out the window <laughs> because his idea is logical. Get out of here. Like, Fuck him. <laughs> I gotta wonder what they're gonna call the next one. I think I think that'll be the most exciting thing. I don't even care about anything else. What are you gonna call this? I got thing? it. Bad boys for for life, for forever. <laughs> Bad boys forever. Okay, that's probably gonna be it. You actually, I think that's exactly what it's going to be. Calling it <laughs> Bad Boys know. Forever. You heard it right here. What if they did a Bad Boys title that would have been perfect for the third movie? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I don't know how they could figure that out. Uh, It'd be funny, though. I would give them props if they actually own their mistake. Bad that Boys much Trinity? And... Mm. Oh. oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> if they call it Bad Boys Trinity, we riot. Yeah. <laughs> we riot. Uh, Hugo Weaving is not returning for Matrix 4. Yeah, that's true. I think something to do with scheduling. And he also yeah. said something about how impossible it was to deal with Marvel for his... That's why he never came back as Red Skull. That's kind mm. of like a minor thing. Yeah. Um, which I think is too bad. Because I think Hugo Weaving is just as important to the Matrix world as Keanu Reeves and Lawrence Fishburne. Like, true. You, I, I well, feel like you can't have was one the without the other. From the beginning. Yeah, he is the he is the bad one. Yeah. You know. So this is the fourth Matrix movie coming out, correct? Yes, yes. it is. Have you seen the first three? No, but is from my understanding the first, the first one is the only good one out of the trilogy, right? One hundred percent. The first one is still to this. Mind movie. you, the second one was pretty great for CGI at the time, except for the big fight scene. With the Smiths. But at the time... No, but even then, man. But I at remember the time... watching it. <laughs> Everything else about yeah. it was really good. Yeah. The fight choreography was great. The scene with the Merovingian was great, who apparently he's coming back now. Interesting. Um, when a lot of people are upset for some reason because he's a pervert, he, cre- he, he gave a girl an orgasm with a chocolate cake he sent her, which was basically he embedded the code, and then he met up with her and things were happening. Oh, okay. And he's with Monica Belushi. Like... You don't ever do anything when you're with Monica Belushi. Mm-hmm. Like, because it's Monica fucking Belushi. Mm-hmm. Speaking of which, <laughs> have you ever seen Shoot 'em Up? No. Oh, yeah. I rewatched Amazing. it. It's still good. It's so crazy. Soph it's watched ridiculous. it too. She's like, I don't know if I want to see this. I'm like, Soph, she's like, what, what is this movie about? I'm like, Soph. Shooting everything up. That's what it is. But I said, I want you to imagine 
what a live action Bugs Bunny and Elmer Fudd movie would be. <laughs> Literally, That's actually, yeah. Shoot him up. That's a good I analogy. Said, <laughs> it was. I didn't. I didn't come up with it. Okay. Someone said it after I'd watched it, and then I oh watched the God. movie like four times in a row after. Uh, that's all I said. She's like, okay. And so we're sitting there watching it and this entire time. You're just like, what the fuck? What the fuck? How the fuck? And what the, like, it's so over the top. Oh, yeah. But for some reason, at least for me, and it sounds like for yeah. you and for Soph, you're just in it and you're like, it's a lot of it is corny. But mm-hmm. it's funny. It's kind of cringy, but it still works. It's it has, called shoot 'em up. Shoot 'em up. up. It has it and has Monica a feel in it. of a uh, little bit smoke and aces in it. Yep. Kind of the same. It's theme, almost like if Sin but smoke and aces actually ended up being a little bit more serious than shoot 'em up. Yeah, shoot 'em up was like completely ridiculous in this for the most part. Yeah, I, I honestly think that if Sin City and Smoke and Aces had a baby <laughs> with Wanted. Like oh. all three of them, yeah. this is <laughs> yeah. the type of movie. Which is funny That's because fair. as soon as we finish shoot 'em up, I was like, "Fuck it, let's just watch Wanted." We've already you seen know one what? that one's gun not terrible. It, it had some merit. In it. You know what? It was an interesting world they created, nonetheless. Yeah, I mean, I still like yeah. shoot 'em up better, but Monica Bellucci's in it, yeah. and she's like, it's just so funny. And Paul Giamatti is like the best bad guy. Yeah. It's, so what is? Is it like a western? No, no. Or is it set now. <laughs> no. It's yeah. essentially Modern. this guy sitting on a bench. This girl, pregnant girl, runs by him. She ends up having a baby. These guys are after to kill the baby. He's like gets Protecting away. Her, yeah. Oh, and then it just creates a whole wacky then, adventure. Like, the stuff that they do with the guns is crazy. Like everything about it is just. I will say, is carrots. <laughs> is it like threat level midnight where it's like right in your face? Boom, boom, boom. No, boom, no, boom. not that bad. I mean, it's pretty close. But if you watch it, you're just gonna sit there and you'll be like, "What the hell?" And then after you'll be like, "I actually enjoyed that quite yeah. a bit." Yeah. But you'll still be like. What, what, what did fuck? I just watch? <laughs> I, th- I literally think as soon as the movie ended, Soph's first words are, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> but she enjoyed it. Perfect analogy. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's that. PS5, worst kept secret in the world. Apparently is four weeks away from reveal or like uh, a couple of days away. Well, I don't think it's like, I don't think it was ever a secret. No. Like they said, like I think it was very obvious that Stony. I think they said, yeah, we're making the PS5, but I guess they the weren't like feel of it, like the pictures. Mm-hmm. They yeah. just like something. Well, those the dev kit, so like people complaining, oh, the PS5 looks ugly as fuck. Like the PS4 dev kit looked exactly the same as that one, so it's yeah. not like anything to go off of. Yeah, Which I just apparently the PS2 was the highest uh, selling console ever. I don't know because I know it was, but I'm not sure if the Wii ever. Because I think the Wii was close to being on PlayStation it. side. I think. Oh, PlayStation. No, no, no. In like, general? Out of yeah. all of them. Oh, really? PS2 is still number one. IGN Wasn't put out a graphic. Okay, maybe PS5 or PS4 ended up beating the Wii. Mm. Um, okay. Oh, that was sorry. Yes, P- I remember PS4 beat the Wii like quite recently. That's what it yeah, was. Yeah. But it was like just just mm-hmm. recently. The Wii has been holding strong in top five for sure. I think it still is top five. Um, but and also more importantly, yep, yeah, more importantly though, the person who kind of said that the PS5 is being revealed is also the creator, I believe, Corey Balrog of the new God of War. So that means that the new God of War game is coming sooner than you all think. Thank goodness to a PlayStation near you. Oh, it's actually okay. I'm sorry, not to cut, but this is actually super, super interesting. Say the PS2 sold 159 million units. The DS is second place, only five million below the PS2. That's actually quite. That is like yeah. Game Boy is third place. PS4 is fourth, and it's still rising. But I don't think it'll surpass like 150 because it's only at 106. Hmm. And yeah, fuck. Xbox One is the last with 41 million. The PS- Switch has 42. The PS2 at the time, do you think it was actually fairly cheaper than what new consoles are at th- at this level? I thought it was 400 bucks. Was it 400? I can't remember. I feel I, like it. I, I think like the Xbox was, was like. 360 was around like two, not 200. I guess, yeah, it would have been 400. So, either way, they were still expensive. I was going to say, like, if the caliber of like where they were at at the time, like, if it was different, I like, think you they mean, you're, you're talking inflation wise, like how much I it was guess. then versus now yeah. and what the inflation would be. I guess so. I don't know. Maybe you could probably look up what the PlayStation 2 was worth. The PS2 probably came out what, PS3. almost 20 so, years ago. No, no. Uh, well, I had a PS2. 10. Yeah, the PS3 yeah. kind of came at out least, like at least yeah. 10, 15 years ago. Not 15. The PS3 kind of came out like in my childhood age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold so on. we have the we PS2 have should be like PS2 release before then, like relatively within 10 years. I'm gonna say early 2000s. PS2. Well, Xbox came out early March 2000. 2000. Right. Yeah, so I think Xbox and PS2 were competing against each other when they yeah. both launched. And then PS3 was 2006. Yeah, there you go. And then the PS4 came out 2012. 
2013. Ooh. It came out when Black so, Flag did. I remember so that. So clearly they try it. to go for every six years new new console. But within Which that, gen- within those, they always do like bigger hard drive, uh, yeah. whatever this and that and the other. Yeah. Different special editions. Well, yeah, stuff. what was I going to say? I totally. Oh, yeah. Sorry. So did you guys hear Cyberpunk and Avengers, the game, both got delayed until... I think Cyberpunk is around September, October, mm-hmm. and Avengers is like literally right around then too. Yeah. Uh, so people are saying Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk, the director or developer said it's ready to go, it's playable. Yeah. But we need to like fine tune it. That's fair. And I think there's. I think people are saying they're making it ready for the next gen console because obviously, like a month after that comes out. Well, because they have quite, they haven't quite gotten every game up to 4K yet, right? Because mm-hmm. that's the next big step, and that's what these new consoles are meant to do. Like, I mean, PS4 Pro kind of helped cuz I, I but there were start, uh, were there any games that are actually 4K yet? I don't I know Xbox has a few because they've had the 4K Their console own. for a while. Right. Uh PS4, I'm not sure. Like I don't have a 4K TV, so yeah. I wouldn't like care if someone told me this game's 4K anyway. Mm-hmm. I think some like I don't know, Naughty Dog games might like Uncharted 4. There weren't very many and then I know cuz there's again, these were like kind of Midway kind mm, of. I guess consoles. the Uncharted Four was in like grade ten, so because I imagine the One X ago. three years ago. One X is the one that's four K. Yeah, I believe so. So that one probably came out what three years ago at most. Two. I think it was two. Like it's like they've very, been very Xbox soon. has been fucking releasing consoles. Yeah. Uncharted Four came out May tenth of twenty sixteen. Okay. Yeah. And then the Lost uh, One, which actually was like the game that I did those commentary videos. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you could probably find them on YouTube. Um, Lost Legacy. That was a good game. Mm-hmm. I did, uh, yeah, I did it for YouTube. A couple of them. The first talk couple sucked. You could barely hear it. And then somebody's like, "Dude, you got to turn up your volume." I was like, <laughs> "Thanks, man." At uh, least somebody was watching, though. No, he was like, "I actually want you to do well." Like, so I'm telling you, I'm like, "Thanks." Also, speaking of the, the, the Google or not the Google, the YouTube's Joe Jordan. He had sent a message. We don't really get many comments on the videos on YouTube, but he had made a comment on like, "Man, how do you guys only have?" Like barely a thousand people. You guys should be like your got your quality and stuff. It should be like in the million. I'm like, and yeah, you know what? I'm very proud of the quality of video that we mm-hmm. put out. Like from the video quality to the sound quality. But I just said, I'm like, hey man, like we just kind of gave up the video thing. We're working on the audio. We might bring it back. And he's just like, oh cool, cool. Like no worries. Super nice guy. So Joe Jordan, I saw you subscribed after those that comment that you had, or after I commented to you. Really appreciate the sub and the very Joe nice Jordan. Words. Joe Jordan. And I hope you like the audio stuff. Um, Bill Murray is going to be in Afterlife, and he has read the script and says it's really good and heartwarming, and that's why he's going to be coming back as Venkman. From what I understand, all the originals are coming back, except for the one, obviously, who's deceased. Yeah. Um, which, basically, the main character is a descendant of him. like a, mm-hmm. That's a grandfather, mm-hmm. great-grandfather. So who's the Stranger oh, Kids kid like what who is the one with the glasses he's yeah. egon's kid yeah. is that like but his dad's paul rudd right no no who's paul rudd is he just some random i think he's just a random okay. yeah but i think every other character is supposed to come back from the original mm-hmm. yeah. it's harold ramus harold ramus yeah he was egon spangler so yeah. that makes sense and actually he kind of looks like he would be his descendant yeah. yeah so that's the whole point behind it it was kind of in the trailer too. Like it was. Was it? I didn't a little, even pay a very little, I think. But yeah, it was there. That was a very lackluster so, trailer for me. But yeah. I did like. It's a teaser. I did like it's Paul not a Rudd full in length, it. Is it? Was it a full length? Well, teasers are like two minutes thirty seconds now, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Like, the word teaser that, means literally nothing. They do that stupid fucking thing where they like have like the countdown to the seconds. trailer. They I the hate that too. And they show like the best scene in there, and then yeah. they like bring you to speed. And but it must be working. Like they probably have a group of people that they showed it to, and be like, "Let's do this," and then show the rest of the ter- trailer. And people are like, "Oh, I'm excited to see the rest of it to see where it gets." But what's like, the point? Because like if we're watching the trailer already, you've yeah. already sold us. Yeah. Like you don't need to sell us again. Like I'll tell you why, because. Our attention span isn't that great, and a lot of times when the trailer opens up, we'll just end up skipping it and skipping it. Whereas if they start off with like the best part at the end, mm-hmm. it's it's a teaser in and of itself for the actual trailer, so then you can watch it. And you know what? As much as I'm saying they do it and it's stupid and I hate it, it works it's because a lot smart. of the times I'm like, yeah. "Fuck, I'm gonna watch this whole goddamn trailer to see what the fuck it's gonna happen." But it, they have a teaser yeah. for the teaser. Yep. In the teaser trailer. Yeah, yeah it's crazy. Fuck his sense. They found a way to, it's like this weird meta joke, like meta trailer. 
See, Rick and Morty, I don't I think you guys watch it. There's one joke, though, where in the episode, Rick and Morty keep going through these, like, different simulations. Mm-hmm. And they finally get out. And the guy comes out. No, you're in a simulation. In a simulation. In a simulation. <laughs> in a simulation. And there's this whole fucking just thing. It never just, ends. You know that most people are, like, there's a good chunk of people that believe that we're in a simulation. I know. In the Matrix. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily the Matrix. That's what they call it. But we them. are a simulation of something. Like, somebody... Yeah. Like, this world is a simulation and somebody else controlling it, which that means that the people controlling us are most likely mm-hmm. very similar to us. Mm-hmm. And so they've made that simulation. And my guess is, like, we did our VR breakdown. Yeah. We're going to create our own simulation of this world. Rick and Morty has an episode exactly like that. That's probably yeah. what's going to happen. Yeah. And what's funny is that I was listening to Rogan. He was, uh, it was Rogan and Brian Callen. And he actually brought up the fact that we're going to be living in this augmented reality and we're all going to have these social scores on us. So once you look at somebody with these glasses, Mm -hmm. just like Iron Man pinpoint something, we'll have like a social score, how many friends we have on Facebook, what people have rated us, all that stuff. Like he took it a little bit, like he took it just as far as I did in another direction on how we're going to rate each other as people. So be like, Mm -hmm. I don't want to fucking know this guy. He only has a score of this much. Well, Mm -hmm. yeah, Black Mirror. I want, this was like what got me into like checking out Black Mirror. They had an episode, which I never saw because I want to watch it in order, (laughs) but it was like exactly the same way. Where you could, F, like, if I want to block Vasily, his face was blurred in the episode. Like, it was shit like that. And it just mm-hmm. showed you, like, oh, wow. exactly, like, that kind of same scenario, how it was. It's probably not a good idea for me to watch Black Mirror because technology scares me. <laughs> and also, Snowden had put out a report that in 10 years, we're going to all be under, like, a crazy amount of surveillance. Like they're doing, I believe it's in China. He said that, look at what's happening in China where everybody's under surveillance. We're all But yet, they're still... The new plague happening in China, yeah. and someone in Vancouver, someone in Vancouver got like stopped because they oh, think wow. they have symptoms of it. It's gonna Jeez. be like, um, no. what the fuck was it? Was it SARS? When uh, SARS was outbreaking and people were SARS, being stopped at the border, flu, border that that swine flu. Well, there was Ebola. That was yeah. a big thing. What's really cool though, and it's not cool that the virus is out, but what's really cool is that uh, in China they were building a a thousand room hospital. Mm-hmm. They're fucking yeah. hauling over the that. weekend. Yeah, and it's just like. That's how you fucking do it, man. Like, I, I, we had this in our sibling chat. Yeah. Because, like, my sister-in-law is big on regulation because she works for the government. I'm not that big on regulation. I am big on some regulation. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, listen, if they had to go through any type of politics or bureaucracy, that hospital would not get built. Mm-hmm. I would say bureau- I would say the red tape belongs there in a, in, a, in a regular system like this where, like, you don't have a crisis. That's crisis mode. No. You just go. Mm-hmm. And then you figure out everything after. But, I mean, yeah. let's be honest here. Yeah, well, it's I don't crazy. know. Right. No, please. But the thing that has been posted online and I saw, mm-hmm. there's been a plague since 1720. Like, mm-hmm. there was a plague in the 1720s, the 1820s, 1920s. And now we have one in And now possibly in the 2020s. But was, okay, so... What is that? Was it during or did it start then? And the I think I'm it was just that, like in some time in the twenties. Like I don't know so, if it was like, because yeah. I mean, yeah. not the exact. 20, I think nineteen twenties. Yeah, yeah. It was like after the twenties, though, wasn't it? Yeah. Like it wasn't prior to. Like I think it happened because of the war afterwards. I think the Spanish flu might have been around the nineteen twenties, but I don't remember. I don't know. It's it was it was super interesting, and it, it was also interesting to that when it comes to like. Like the the fact that they're like, no, we've got to act right now. We mm-hmm. know what we need to do. We're gonna do it. Fuck all of y'all. These people need hospitals, yeah. right? And a lot of the cases where they could have done that, but like you said, in the society that we live in, we don't have to. We don't prioritize it because we make it go through the red tape. Yeah, and we and don't need it. That's the thing. It's not necessary. I'm I'm for the red tape when it's, you know, when it's a process. It's part of your regular day kind of thing. Yeah. But like I said, this is a crisis. You need to deal with it correctly. So they built this thing to quarantine these people and treat them accordingly. So yeah. I'm game for that. Well, I was, uh, I'm reading a book called Blink from Malcolm Gladwell, and it's mm-hmm. all about thin slicing. And in one of the chapters, it was talking about how they separated the army at one point for training with new tech in mm-hmm. the red and blue teams. And the blue team had was like they had all the tech in the world, surveillance, everything. Yeah. And they were just gathering information, information, information. And they had this general, his last name was Von Ripper, and it's a real guy. Yeah. And he had him. They had him on the red team, I mm-hmm. believe, because the blue team was the tech team. Yeah, and they were supposed to be the bad guys. And they ended up getting onto their beach or something like that, using all this tech, gathering all this information, everything like that. But the red team ended up beating them because they didn't wait to gather thousands of bits of information. Yeah. They acted. He's like, 
what we did in World War One or World War Two, like we use motorcycles to get information. Yeah. These guys are trying to surveil our phones. Well, we'll send motorcycles. We'll do. They do. They did a light system, a light flaring system that yeah. I think was established in World War One yeah. to let people know when to fly their planes instead of sending a uh, something out for that. Yeah, it's so crazy and this kind of like. When that report came out, I'm like, well, this is kind of like that thing of like, oh, no, yeah. we're not going to sit here and gather all the information what we need. We yeah. need to act, and we know what we need to do. No one said the red tape or that way is quick. Yeah. It's just thorough, I guess you can say. But in that, in this book, which I highly recommend people mm-hmm. read, it's um, it's that idea that maybe the more information you have, mm-hmm. the less effective you are. Yeah. Like there's a hospital in Chicago that used to run – all sorts of tests for people, and they use an ECG or an EEG yeah. to get it. Well, a guy in the 70s came up with a three-question system to pick if someone has a heart attack or not. Yeah. And then they found that this three-question system actually was better at gauging who has a heart attack or not <coughs> Excuse me. than all of these machines and like these hours mm. and hours. Yeah. Because with this machine, they were sending people home that had a heart attack mm-hmm. or that were prone for one and keeping people that didn't and this hospital was already run down. People were all like, it was mm. it was crazy. Yeah. So, yeah, like there's so many sides to it, but with in this book, it's just like those moments where splits the set. It's like second mm-hmm. decisions. Like yeah. you just know, right? Hmm. But the hard part is when you know, it's really hard to describe what you know, and that's what the locked door theory is, where you can you have your instinct mm-hmm. but behind your mind. There's a locked door that if you were to to say to describe it, there's no fucking chance you hmm. would be able to. It's really good. Interesting. I'm actually up to two books a week now. Good Shit, week. like yeah, I went from nothing. So I've got one in my desk at the office that I'm reading from on my lunch hour, and I just bought it about a week or two ago. I finished another book at my desk, and now this one I'm halfway through, and then I'm reading a chapter a night on one book at home. So, hmm. like guys, I bought so many fucking books. I need to hmm. finish them. I can't yeah. keep buying books. Okay, yeah. and this is physical books. Anyways, tangent. Physical okay. books are just better, though. I can track my progress. I can, mm-hmm. like, I just like. It's just nice. Like, even like with me, like when Nick bought me the Dragon Ball like Z, I was reading three volumes a day. Like, I finished it in a week and a half. Yeah, Twenty six well. volumes hmm. of a fucking manga I finished in a week and a half because I was just like, you know what? All nights I just go home, chill, go in the basement, and just boom, that was it. Yeah. yeah. And I just, I don't know, because the physicality of actually holding it is just way more better to me as a collector, even just mm. like. It feels like I'm, let's say you're a collector. Well, yeah, you as a collector. Want, but even what were you if, gonna say? Well, even just as like I don't know what I was gonna say actually. Did you say it feels like you're a part of it? Well, it's just yeah, it's like more immersed. Like if I'm reading on my like yeah. phone, it's like I get so distracted. Notification comes up. Oh, boom! I'm done. Yeah. yeah. If I'm reading the book, I'm reading the fucking book and I'm going. Yeah. I the second you said like I saw you saying that, <laughs> and I was like, yep, that's exactly what it is. Like you feel like you're in it. Like you oh, feel like you're 100%. holding it. You're flipping through the pages. You're you're going through the mechanics of it. But I just found recently, like before, it actually used to freak me out. Like I used to like buying books, mm-hmm. but I'd never actually finish them. Mm-hmm. And I, had I just liked lot. buying them. Like if I saw that the description was good, if I heard a book was good, I'd buy it. So I actually have a lot of books that were recommended by people that are really good. Mm-hmm. And I used to read more when I was a kid, but for the longest time, not a fucking thing. Mm-hmm. Now... I'm actually just enjoying it. It's become part of my routine. Mm-hmm. And and I'm not even reading it to just say that I'm reading him. I'm just like, I found a system. My lunchtime, I'm not doing anything anyways. And what I'm picking up and reading is good. Mm-hmm. And I'm enjoying them and I'm just enjoying the process. And I'm not even doing it to learn information to use against somebody else because there was a point where i was doing that a lot Mm. now it's just i'm doing it because i just enjoy doing it it's information for you it's information for me and And in this case let's say when we're talking about like the hospital and stuff i can bring up timbits of the information and being like there is a thing there's actually a thing tibbit sorry (laughs) tidbits very very canadian of you it's tidbits. I've heard I've heard people say Timbits though. Yeah, I guess yeah. it could just be the Canadian I, thing. I think though, it's or, Canadian yeah. thing. But that's funny. Um, Anyways, do yeah. you guys believe? I hmm. mean, I'm pretty sure you guys do. Fuck. In love. Oh, actually, Anthony, explain to me the new Captain America, please. Okay, so U.S. agent. I don't know much about him, but yeah. from what I understand with the show, is that everybody was triggered because they saw him holding the shield. Yeah. 
it's not like Falcon willingly gave him the shield. Yeah. And I don't even think it is the legitimate shield because from the photo, like I saw these four black lines like on the silver mm -hmm. and that just looks like doesn't look the same way he gave it to him. Yeah. So my theory is or my thought is or everybody's thought is that the government basically said no to Sam because he was an outlaw and he still is from Civil War mm -hmm. and they don't find him trustworthy enough. Okay. So they give it to U.S. agent. U.S. agent is a dick. Apparently he's like not like he's kind of think about the boy. So it's he's like opposite. He's like the opposite of Captain America in a way. He's better, like he's faster, stronger because the serum is like more advanced. But oh, okay. oh, they've actually created a serum for this guy. I believe so. I think because I know I don't know how it works in the MCU, but I knew like well, there are a bunch of people in the so comics. They basically didn't follow what the Doctor wanted in the very first one. Mm -hmm. Someone with the character to. Well, you, yeah. did you think they were gonna follow the order? No. Probably not. But yeah, basically what my thoughts are for this is that he's not gonna be a reoccurring character. It's mm -hmm. gonna be Sam. And Bucky, like, trying to take him down or just prove themselves as the worthy successors of Captain America. Yeah, I like it. Mm -hmm. At first, when I saw that, I was one of those people that got butthurt. Mm -hmm. I was like, what the fuck is this? Because I don't like them rewriting history for the sake of rewriting history. Well, especially immediately, like, mm -hmm. backtracking, yeah. But that, I think, is a really good good thing i'm really excited to watch that show like i, I am stupidly now. excited yeah i am I, I like i was before obviously but yeah oh, i'm yeah. in well after the mandalorian it's like you know what like a tv show this good in the marvel universe like they haven't really done that yeah I'm well really excited for besides the netflix though. ones i don't count netflix ones because yeah. but yeah like a soul like mcu yeah mcu anime. show yeah oh also speaking of netflix stuff not really netflix stuff if you ever go to a website, and I think I've quoted this website here before, but I found out recently from Anthony that most of their shit is bullshit, and I've been noticing more and more of it is actually bullshit. If you ever come across the website, we got this covered.com, don't even fucking bother. Mm -hmm. And I made the mistake and was using information on there on the show. I think some of it ended up being credible, but the more and more stuff they put out, they're just clickbait websites. Well, that's like I, the one and I realized I have to thank for was the Dragon Ball live action one from Disney because yeah. Fox had the rights for Dragon Ball. And I was I was saying there's no way in hell Toei Animation, who owns Dragon Ball, mm -hmm. was going to do another fucking live action movie because the first one bombed drastically. I never even heard of it or saw it. Dragon Ball Evolution, it was called. And I never saw it either because I wasn't a fan of the show at the time. Yeah. But it's just like, it's not even... Do you think they could ever pull off a live action? Oh, 100%. I think they could like easily now, especially like with mm -hmm. how Marvel and DC is with the fight scenes. Like mm -hmm. Dragon Ball is literally 90% fight scene. <laughs> okay. It's like literally yeah. just fight scenes. So I feel like if they do it well and they actually adapted the sagas into the movies yeah, yeah, or yeah. even a live action show, it'd be easily done. No, keep going. Okay, that was pretty much it. That's all I had for that topic. Yeah. Um, I saw the two popes. The two popes for what? <laughs> the movie. Okay. On Netflix. Did you watch it? No. See, I think G mentioned it the other day, and it's a contender on. Uh, isn't for Oscar? Like Anthony Hopkins, I think is nominated. He's uh, uh, supporting. Supporting. And then the other actor, I forget what his name is now. Fuck. He was. He's the one that's nominated for lead. The, like the but lead. Very good. It's good, right? Oh, it's amazing. I thought it was so good. And like from the beginning, they always said that that I keep forgetting this damn actor's name. What's his name? I'll find him. He Anyways. was a bad guy in Tomorrow Never Dies. Yeah, and he was the High Septon. And the high or, or the the high sparrow oh yes yeah anyways he from the very beginning looked like pope francis so uh, it was very good jonathan price i always forget it jonathan price is price. right exactly yeah no it was very well done it was very interesting obviously loosely based on their interactions how everything went down but you know what i thought it was very well done and they showed some clips of the real life events that occurred. Did, I they guess. Tease, did they tease the sequel, the Three Popes? You know what? There's supposed to be. No. There's no, no, no. Here's the thing. Oh, so I think this was a fan made poster <laughs> because there's the HBO series, The New Pope or The Young Pope, mm. with Jude Law, mm -hmm. and someone put Jude Law's character or that poster, mm -hmm. and then Jonathan Price's. On each other. I think that might have been just fan made. Oh. I can't imagine they're going to intertwine because that's real life versus a made up world kind of thing. So, yeah, I don't think I, I think that was a fan made thing, but it was just very interesting that they did that. But yeah. overall, very good. It was one of those ones like I heard it was good. I'm just going to start watching it and go for it. Mm -hmm. So, um, obviously, oh, yeah, the Obi Wan movie on, or show on hold. Yeah. 
indefinitely. Uh, due to unhappy people being unhappy with scripts. Mm-hmm. Well, apparently, it's the like actual like Kathleen. What's her name? Kennedy. Kennedy. Yeah, Kathleen Kennedy. Like specifically, who's in charge of Star Wars right now? Mm-hmm. Like she yeah, like has, has not been happy with a single script that turned sucks. in. Sucks. Which is good. You know, it's it, like it okay. sucks that they haven't found the right one. But yeah, it's good that mm-hmm. they're rejecting. Like, no, we want it to be good. Now, now the bar is set at Mandalorian level, mm-hmm. or even better if you want to talk one off. Because it's supposed to be a series now. I think yeah, it's just one yeah. season. Because like, there's you can't extend to yeah, exactly it's like a very limited time. Yeah. Slot. So Mandalorian is at the pace now for what Ob- what Kenobi could end up being. Mm-hmm. Um, but more so to the fact, that I I look it back if it's at the caliber of what Rogue One is, mm-hmm. just as good. Mm-hmm. But um, Netflix is doing some bullshit with their recording viewers, where they're now tracking. If you watch something for two minutes, they track that as a view for their investors. Oh, well. Before. It was like half, say? wasn't it? Oh, make sure I stop it at a minute. <laughs> so you'd have to watch at least 70% of an episode. Well, some intros are like a minute long. Like some for sure. theme songs. Yeah. So up to this point, Netflix recorded a viewer as one user account, even if it's shared by multiple people, watching at least 70% of an episode. Now, Netflix is basing a view on a title. It decides a viewer has chosen to watch figuring two-minute shows of very, two, figuring two minutes shows a viewer made a choice to watch that thing. But they stopped watching stupid. after two minutes. See, I would say if they went 50%, mm-hmm. sure, shorten up the, the gap, but that much, two minutes? It's nothing. Yeah. Well, it's it fucking from, nothing. Went from three quarters to like not even yeah. <laughs> a, half a quarter. This is the best comment. Two minutes. This is from Joreen Balakura. Uh, it was on Twitter. Two minutes. Do you know how many things I've accidentally clicked on and watched for two minutes? And then Clive... Uh, at Clive on first, also as part of this part, it was on like the article. Hmm. It says they probably count the two minute preview when you hung hung when you hover over the title too. <laughs> yeah, you know how it gives you a oh, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's so dumb. But you know what? It's as dumb as not as dumb, but like they do the same thing when they're trying to pitch to market or to other investors with those websites that you have to. Keep sliding over mm-hmm. instead of showing everything on one page. They do ten separate pages for a top ten list mm. because it shows one person equals ten views, which then drives the numbers higher, so they can manipulate the stats. That's why they do it. Otherwise, we would never have a pay- one site or one article take us to ten different pages. Well, shout out to Screen Rant because I've noticed they were like we're notorious for doing that, and now they have the slideshow feature, which literally highlights all the points, and you just go boom, 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 done. But okay. I still think that they would probably get numbers from the clicks. Well, probably, but it's more efficient. It's like not you have to go to a new page each time that will like right. load and do whatever. Hmm. Um, George R. R. Martin says he's giving Game of Thrones fans a new ending to the series. Mm-hmm. Just do the ending that you're supposed to do. I think, I think he's doing the ending he was always meant to do. Good, because realistically, no one actually knew his ending, and I don't think yeah. obviously the those guys, those didn't, guys either. didn't do the ending either. So. To say that he's, it's a new ending from what we know, not necessarily a new ending from what he intended, personally. Yeah. I haven't read the book, so it doesn't really matter. Actually, yeah, that's actually something I want to do. I have not I think I the might. books. I'm I gonna... have the first one if you want it. No, thanks. I need to read all 40 books that I have to read. You bought 40 books that you haven't read? In the read? past how many years? You know what it is? Every oh. time I sit and read a book. I thought you like recently started no, buying. No, no. You just bought all these so books. Yeah, you know, last read. week going to chapters. Uh, every... Now I have 40 books on read. <laughs> every fucking summer, especially those years we're going to chapters all the time, oh, yeah, I'd yeah. go fucking wander in the bookstore. Yeah. And then I'd always find a goddamn book I want to buy. All of it is like nonfiction. I think I have three fiction books maximum. All of it is like stuff that I want to know about. Yeah. But I also want to do better in my overall just writing in general mm-hmm. and thought process and stuff. So a friend of mine said you should read nonfiction because it's better for your imagination. Mm-hmm. Anyways, the Witcher books I want to read next, but I can't until I read all these other fucking books. Then I can justifiably buy the Witcher books, and then I can well, it watch depends. Game of you can choose to read, read a book Thrones. in different settings. So, like at work, you'll read one book, and at home, you can read another. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it depends. I also don't want to have like I have some books that are like this fucking big. They're huge. Yeah. Yeah. And the one Leonardo da Vinci biography I have next mm-hmm. on deck, once I finish this economics book, is like this thick, so I can't necessarily put it on my desk because it's mm-hmm. massive. But um, yes, The Witcher and the Game of Thrones I do actually mm. want to read. Obviously, we know that there's a war between movies and comic book movies, or a war for movies. And that's something that Tarantino had said. It's like, this has like kind of been the year because everybody was talking about Endgame, but then yeah. all of a sudden he came out with his movie. Uh, Irishman came out. So yeah. Once Upon a Time, Irishman, Joker, all of that stuff, which I don't consider Joker a comic book movie. No. I consider it an art piece. Um, 
but he was they're talking about how it's been a war on movies for like Marvel, Star Wars, Godzilla, James Bond. Uh, all they of say that the stuff. movies versus the film versus the blockbusters. Exactly. Yeah. Now, obviously, that's going on, and it's mostly talking, yeah. right? We've talked about it before. Clearly, it's going on. I think it's actually bigger than the fucking Marvel and DC feud. Well, Marvel DC point. isn't really having a feud anymore. It's just the fans that are being yeah. toxic. Yeah, yeah. But um, there have this year has been really good. Like Irishman, Parasite, nineteen seventeen, which I haven't seen yet. Marriage Story, Jojo Rabbit, and even Tarantino says this this is a really groovy year to combat something like Avengers Endgame, which for the months before it came out and the month after you couldn't talk about anything else. I think the idea of having to combat it is kind of silly. Mm-hmm. And also, he can say that because his movie, he has clout. If, mm-hmm. if he says he's putting out a movie, just like if Nolan is or Scorsese, yeah. people are going the fuck to watch it. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. But, I mean, I don't know. At this point, it's been talked about so many times, and I think this mm-hmm. war on movies is less the war on movies and more on war of our own, our, each of our attention. Mm-hmm. And I honestly believe that the streaming wars are actually the, like, I don't think Avengers Endgame is the bad guy here. I think it's 30 fucking streaming services that are all vying for our attention. Yeah. They're making it real easy to stay at home. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's more of the, Basically. the, the war. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the, the thing between Marvel movies and regular movies, I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. I could be saying something completely different if all these movies end up being just shit after shit after shit and I'd be like hey, stop yeah that's fair but guess what they aren't mm-hmm. they touch the soul and it's funny because you asked me before we started which we're going to wrap up right away um, how I liked Frozen 2 did I mention Frozen 2 last week I think you might have okay did I mention yeah yeah I did mention that I went with Georgie yeah, right yeah, yeah, okay yeah. Yeah, so then I don't have to bring that up again. Anyways, yeah, going to a movie with a three-year-old and watching them like actually get super excited is totally fucking worth it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's pretty. It was pretty awesome. Um, that's it. Was there anything else you gents had? No, I don't really. think I have anything new. No. Fuck you. Look good, Vass. Hey. Huh? Don't look at me after you say <laughs> that. And not say anything. <laughs> huh? Freaking weird, man. Vass looks good. Um, that's hey, it. Go Nick, to the thank club you for now. the glasses. Apparently, Apparently, yeah. yeah. Thank you for the glasses. Skull. These things are dope as fuck. Oh, excellent timing. Yeah. Um, excellent timing on the camera. Did you end up doing anything with that video last time? No, I was okay. super lazy. That's okay. This time, um, I'll just do the Joe Rogan style and just clip it up. Oh, yeah. do it. Then. You know what? Even if you just like splice it up and put like the that scratch thing in between, mm-hmm. you don't even have to do the extra like. But it's just if more you, like if you find wise. some great, but I don't. It doesn't have to necessarily be heavy on that. Mm-hmm. Even if you just do the splicing and have that little scratch thing Mm -hmm. i think that works too um anyways that's it it's another episode another week thank you so much for joining us um i think i put a hiatus on the t-shirts for now i'm waiting to get some feedback arturo liked it you guys liked it did he send a photo did he i don't know did he i don't know i'll ask him i'll ask him to send a photo actually and post it on the instagram yeah um (laughs) and then i'll get to work i'm working on some new designs Hmm. i'd like to get my new designs going and that's it Thank you so much for joining us for another week. And I hope you have an awesome time. And at the time when you're listening to this, I hope that you're smiling because of us jackasses in your ears. Why are you so sensitive today? I don't know, man. I think I've just been reading too much. <laughs> uh, you can in, find my me on, <laughs> in my head. You can find me on Twitter at the F words G. You can email us at the F word podcast at gmail.com. Even though you don't, you can find us on Instagram at the F word podcast, Facebook at the F word podcast, the lazy Canadian on Instagram. And that's it. I'm G. I'm Anthony. I'm Bass. And we are out. Mm-hmm.